This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and in this video we're going to be updating our system for how we save our game progress. Up to this point we've been using player prefs to save both our volume settings as well as our game progress, and while player prefs is good for things like your player's preferences, your volume settings, maybe certain graphical settings, things like that, you really don't want to be saving your game progress there because it's relatively easy to get in there and to actually mess with those values, so a player could technically hack your game and, you know, cheat their way to a final level, things like that if they really wanted to. We're going to use a system that's, while not completely impenetrable, makes it a lot more difficult for the player to get into it, which is using a binary save um, system. So we're going to set this up right now. If you've seen my videos on uh, different options for saving, you've seen some of this work being done before, we're going to be able to streamline it a little bit just because of the simple nature of this game. But I do want to jump in and show how this works in the actual context of a game here. So let's jump into our scripts folder and we're going to open up our save manager. Now this is a static class though, so this sort of exists you know, throughout our game no matter where we are, we can always access this class. And currently what we've been doing is at the end of our levels, we've been telling our play session manager to call this save function and then at the start when we first load up our game to call this load function, which are again just using player prefs. We're going to change that up right now though. And the first thing we need though is a place to save these files. We're actually going to be creating a physical file that's going to be stored on our player's computer in order to save this data now. And so, and not just in player press, which is kind of audit, which also stores in a file, but is automated. We're going to be creating our own custom file. So for now though, to make this a little bit more obvious for us, I'm going to go into my assets folder and I'm actually going to right click and create a new folder in here. And I'm going to just call this saves. And this is the sole purpose of this folder is going to be to store our um, game save data right now. Eventually, we are going to move this so that it's not within our build. But for right now, like I say, it's going to make it a lot more apparent that this is happening. I'm even going to open up into this so that we can see it happen when it does ultimately happen. So back in our save manager, we need a few variables here that are going to help us get to that folder. The first one I'm going to call is going to be a um, static string called path. And this is going to be equal to a forward slash, and then that name saves, whatever you named that folder, another forward slash, and then we can close that up. And so what this is basically saying is that we're going to be going from whatever folder we're in into our saves folder, and then just kind of close that off. The next thing I need is a static string for the file name, and I'm going to call this saved game. Again, these are all kind of arbitrary names, and we could actually kind of link these all together. However, I think it's kind of helpful to keep these modular so that at some point if you want to start, you know, iterating over the numbers of your file names, or you need to break these down, it can help to do it in this manner so that you can just kind of stitch them all together at the end and have some flexibility. Lastly, we need an extension for this file. So I'm going to say static string ext. And you can, again, with this, give it any extension you want. You could technically even call it an existing one like .doc. However, it, you just have to be careful because then if you were to, say, open it just from your file explorer, um, chances are your operating system would say, oh, this is a document file. I should try to open it with Microsoft Word or Pages or something like that. It would try to open it up and it would not understand the data that's inside of it, which is why you want to typically give yourself a, sort of a custom extension name or something that's really not popularly used. So for example, in this case, I might just say .sg for saved game. There might be something else that uses that, but chances are it's not going to um, conflict anytime soon. So with these three things, this is really just giving us, this is going to give us the end of our uh, file path, the name of the file we want to save, and the extension. There's one more piece to this that we're going to need, and we're going to put that into our save method here. However, before I do that, I also want to kind of differentiate. I've got a save and load, and then I've got clear saves. And then I've got save setting and load setting. So these two are pretty specified that we're talking about these different volume settings here. However, for these two, I want to specify that these are for our kind of game data. So I'm going to quickly right click here and say refactor, rename, and I'm going to change this from save to save game data. Now, if you ever do refactor like this, you'll know that you have to save your file over again because you've changed the name here. However, anything else that's referencing this will automatically get changed and automatically um, save that for you. So for example, I know that my play session manager calls this method, but it's already been saved in there. In fact, if I go to find references, you'll see down here, 
Play Session Manager, there's the reference to it, the name's already been changed for me. I don't have to worry about going in and resaving that file as well. However, if I did have this Play Session Manager open, then I would need to actively save it as well. So just a little thing to keep in mind when you're refactoring. Likewise, for my load method, I'm going to refactor this and rename it to load game data. Okay, with those in place, we can actually comment out both of the player prefs um, calls here because we're no longer going to be doing either of those. But now what we're going to do is we're going to actually be using Unity's um, kind of file system and file um, file interactions to create these files inside of these folders and store these save data that we want. And for that, we need a couple more um, namespaces up here. I'm going to kind of put them in between because they also use system. So I'm going to say using the first one's really long. It's going to be system dot runtime dot serialization dot formatters dot binary. And this is specifically to take the data that we're passing in as these kind of these objects in C sharp and to convert them to a binary file. The second one is simply using system.io and that's just that's how Unity really interacts with the files, your your computer's file system. It kind of outputs outputs data to the file system or can take files and input it to itself. So with that, we can now actually start um, scripting what was going to happen when we save game data. We're no longer going to call player prefs. Instead, we're going to create this binary formatter and create a file to save on our computer. So we're going to say here, we're going to say binary formatter. And I'm just going to call this BF for short for its name equals a new binary formatter. And this just creates this object that's going to be able to do the formatting for us. We also need to create the file itself or the file stream, which is what's going to ultimately be converted into the file. So we'll say file stream, I'll call this file, equals file.create. And this is going to basically tell Unity this is where you're going, this is going to create this file in this location. You're going to kind of get access to it and be able to store data in it. So here we're going to say application.data path. And you'll notice there's a data path and a persistent data path. Data path brings you to your asset folder. Like we're literally in your inspector here, this assets folder. How you'd access that from the computer is through that data path string is literally C dot, you know, your username slash documents slash unity slash your project slash assets. And it brings you right to right to here. So then from there, we can kind of add to that anything else we want. So this is how, why we're going to add from that data path, we can add to saves, um, the saves folder, and then save files right into this folder. Persistent data path actually goes to a different place. It goes into your app data folder, which is kind of, it's typically actually hidden on your computer. You'll have to, you'd have to actively um, seek it out to find it. And that's where, that's where your game saves are going to get stored. That's once you've built your game and you want your game saves to be so stored elsewhere on your player's computer, not because they can't obviously be saved within the build of the game. Um, that's what you'd be using then. But for right now, like I say, we're going to be using data path so that we can see this easily in the inspector. So data path. And then I'm going to add to this that path that we wrote, the file name, and the extension. And then we can close that out. When you create a file like this, it automatically assumes that you're going to be writing to it as well. You don't have to spec you don't have to specify a file mode that you, that you can use to write to it or append to it or anything like that. In addition, if this file already exists, it will simply overwrite it for you. So you don't have to worry about checking if it already exists as well. Although do be careful because if you are saving something over with the same exact name, you might be saving over old data that you wanted to preserve. Next, we just have to serialize this. So we're going to be basically taking, what we're going to do is we're going to take some piece of data and you can really pass in any object you want. You can pass in a custom class. You can pass in a single struct like an int or a string. You can pass in anything you want, um, which is nice. In this case here, we're going to simply be passing in. All we have to pass in is one integer, the integer that is the furthest level we reached. It's this, um, 
this uh, value right here, which is just, an, like I say, an integer. So we don't have to go about the process of creating like a special custom data file. If we had multiple things, like the level we'd reached, the amount of money we have, our attack power, our current hit points, things like that, then we would want to create a custom class, store all that information in there, and then pass it into this serialize method we're about to use. But in this case here, like I say, we can simply pass in this piece of data here, and we're done. So all we have to do is write bf whoops, bf dot serialize, and first you choose where you're going to serialize it to, so we're going to serialize it to this file, and then we can simply pass in play session manager dot ins dot for this level, and so we're really just, at this moment, this is kind of a little bit of overkill because we're literally serializing to this entire file just one integer. Last thing we need to make sure that we do is we say file.close. Loading game data is going to work largely the same way, but in reverse. And the first thing we need to do, do though, is we need to double check, does this file exist? Have we saved before? The first time we load up our game, we're not going to have this saved file. And so we need to make sure that we also kind of um, have, a, have something set up for that case. In this case here, how we were doing this before, we were simply using... Um, this get int, and this would return a zero for us if there was no information there, and that worked for our purposes because zero would be the first level if you've never played the game before. However, now we're not gonna be able to do quite that, so we're gonna have to actually account for that issue in this case. So what we'll do here is we'll write if file.exists, so we're gonna check if a file exists, and the file that we want is again gonna be this exact same path here. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this to avoid any typos probably a thing that we could eventually put into like a property so that we can always get these four things appended to one another. But for right now, I'll just copy and paste. So if this file exists, then what we can do is load the data. However, if it doesn't exist in the else case, what we're gonna wanna do is we're actually just going to want to assign um, zero to our furthest level. And so we can do that by saying play session manager dot ins dot furthest level equals zero. So this is our else case. This is saying if no data has ever been saved, start at level zero. However, inside of here, if there does exist a file, we can load it here. And so we can do this by, once again, we need another binary formatter. So I'm going to copy this again. because a binary formatter can work in both directions. It can convert your data to a binary file and it can take a binary file and bring it back to be the data that you want. We're gonna need another file stream, this time opening that file, now that we know that it exists. So we're gonna say file.open, and then we're gonna pass in that same string again. And this time though, we do need to specify that we're gonna do file mode.open. I added a parenthesis too soon there. If I go back and do this again, you'll see that you get this, it requests a file mode and there's no option that doesn't request it. So we'll say file mode dot open. You just want to really specify that you're opening and not just appending it. Um, because appending does something we're a little bit different where it looks at, it goes to the very end of your file and starts working from there. But we'll just say file mode dot open, meaning that we're just going to open this up. We're not going to overwrite it. We're not going to, you know, we're not creating a new file. Just opening this one up. And then we can say, in this case here, that play session manager dot ins dot furthest level equals, and then we're gonna deserialize this. Remember, this entire file, all it's really storing is that integer for us. So now in this case, we're going to store in this integer variable that file converted back to an integer for us. So we'll say bf dot deserialize file. And the last thing we need to do here, though, is we need to make sure right now, if you notice, if you go to deserialize, you'll see that it returns an object. I can't quite navigate over to it, but it says public object deserialize. It's just returning sort of a generic object. So we need to make sure that we take that object and cast it back to an integer. So we have to do that by putting right at the start here, we're going to say integer. So this is basically saying take the object that we get deserialized, cast it to an integer, and put it into furthest level. And then last but not least, we want to once again make sure that we close that file out so that we're not leaving it open. And now we're all good. 
We've now converted what was a player pref saving system that was easily accessible and possibly changed into a binary format that once again, now someone could still technically dig their way into if they really wanted to, but it's much more difficult for them. It's a lot, it's a lot more obscure as to how they would do that. So if we go back to Unity now and we hit play, we should see that not a whole lot has changed, except that if I go into the saves folder now and I hit play, we start our game. And if I go choose level, we see we've just got level zero because we've, we haven't started the game yet. I'm gonna start a new game. If I play, at this moment here, we should have created now a new file. Now it doesn't appear right away and that's partly just due to how Unity handles um, when it's running right now, it's not updating this regularly. However, if I right click and refresh, we should see that the saved game now appears. And it appears here, it's got our um, SG um, extension on it. And that is the file that we just created. And so now if I stop playing and I start up again, I can go to choose level and sure enough, I've reached level one. Now it, it remembers that that's happened. And this is no longer happening through player prefs, but instead through this custom file that we've created. So. We've got this working now. There's a few optimizations we can make and we're gonna jump into those in our next video. But in the meantime, we've got our save system working. It's a little bit more secure. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Despite centuries of historical records, we still have no idea what the cubes are or where they came from. They would only react to certain people under certain conditions. Only one thing is known for certain. Those that work with the cubes for too long end up vanishing.